Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen. This is Mukhtar Ahmed with the Virtual University course Leadership and Team Management. Today is our lecture number two. If you remember, that during the last lecture, that was lecture number one, we started discussing about the organization. And the purpose was just to set the stage for this applied advanced course of leadership and team management. We discussed about organizations, what an organization is, why it is important, and we discussed that organization is basically an entity with a specific purpose, deliberate structure, and the important component of an organization is the people. And then we discuss about the difference of traditional organizations and today's organizations, a new organization we say it. While comparing the traditional organizations with the recent, the new, or change organization, we have discussed so many different points. Number one, that they were, the traditional organization were more stable, more top-down approach, and they were not flexible, the timing were fixed, and the people or the worker or the employees were supposed to work at the place of the organization. And there were so many other uh, indicators too. But when you're looking at today's organization, the new organization, we can see more flexibility, more dynamism, more freedom, and time kind of, uh, there was no time restriction. And even the place restriction is not anymore there. It is not necessary that you can go and work in the organization place. And then we also compare different trends in today's organization. It's more team orientation. It is more with the market orientation. And we also discussed during last lecture that while managing the organization, special or specific skills are required. And what is happening in today's organization, basically, the more diversification, the more toward new technology, the speed, change, and these other things are obvious. And now people, the bigger organization, they are merging rather. <coughs> For the resource sharing, to making, as I said, the making the pie larger to have the bigger share. So these are new trends, or these are the new organization. We can see them today working. And it is a competitive environment which is putting more and more pressure on today's organization that they need to invest more on those resources which can create the difference. While discussing the resources of any organization, we also discussed that there are different kinds of resources any organization can have. They can be technological resources, they can be capital resources, they can be uh, raw material, it can be the land, and human resource. And the thing which can make the difference, as we discussed earlier, was the people. And then while discussing the change scenario, we also kind of discuss that to keep on moving in the right direction, the important thing is you should keep on moving. You should make adjustment as the environment is changing. It was also discussed that organizations are not working in isolation. They are in the real environment. And the forces in the, the macro environment, they also affect the working or performance of any organization. Clear? So let's talk about today, for today's lecture, the main focus, that is the people. And sooner we'll be done with the focus of this people part, I'll discuss with you the course which we are going to cover for this subject, that is the leadership and 
team management. So, the topic for today's lecture, that is lecture number two, is focusing on people, the key to success of any organization. Let me show you one slide. If you have taken my organization behavior subject, you might have seen the same slide there. Looking organization as a system. And remember that system is working in a dynamic environment where all those major forces, maybe technological forces, maybe economical forces, geographical forces, any demographic forces, they are affecting the performance of any organization. And within the system of the organization, they have specific structure, they have technology, they have certain tasks to perform, and the important component, the main actor, or I always call the engine of any organization, are the people. So, our focus in today's lecture is these people. Let's see another slide. Take as a, this organization as a whole system. And there are strategic driving forces for any organization. They have a specific purpose, as I said earlier. With the purpose, they define their mission. And keeping in view their mission, they have certain visions. And within the million, they decide goals and place different peoples in different positions to achieve that goal or achieve those goals. Now, what will happen? How are you going to do this with the people? Of course, one can say that if you have only the people, how can you get things done unless you have the technology, unless you have the financial resources, unless you have the market, and so many other uh, stakeholders are, or so many other inputs there. Agreed. But those are those things which anybody can have. I always say that if you have a good, good project, arranging money for that project is not an issue. If you can present an idea which is financially viable, and obviously the return is there, anybody can invest on this thing and you can get the resources, you can arrange the financial resources. Once you have the financial resources, arranging technology, again, is not going to be that much difficult. So those things are, let's take them all, kind of standardize or fix them. Then the only thing left which can create the difference is the people. Right? Now, whatever purpose of an organization have, those people are going to make the difference. The synergical effect, I always say it. And then, organization can implement those processes, those systems. They can make certain adjustment with the time, with the situation, and they can evaluate it. And if things are not working properly, they can make the readjustment. And who is going to make the readjustment? The people. Of course, at different levels. And once that project, that equipment, those things are implemented, you can get the result. You can get the output. And output can be product, service, or anything. And if that output is more than what you have already inputted, which means you have an efficient system. You have an efficient organization. Clear? Now, you have to remember this thing. It is not that simple. If it was simple, everybody should have achieved something. So, we have to also understand the complexity of people and organization. When we are talking about people, individual, human being, very complex thing. I have a laptop. I know how I can turn it on what kind of activity I can do and in return what I'm going to get. Of course, with the human too, there is always a cause-effect relationship. But still, human is a very complex thing God had created. And when you, there are so many different people working together in organization, the situation is even more complex. I don't want to go in all those details because I believe if you have taken those organization behavior courses, or human resource management courses, or basic management courses, so you must be familiar with those things. 
the behavior aspect, the interaction aspect, the perception aspect, the attitude part. So one thing is very clear, that when we are talking about people or, or any organization, we are talking about a very complex situation. So if you are tackling it with a complex situation, you need to be ready for that. If you are a manager, if you are a leader, so you better know all those things before you should take this responsibility of managing or leading any organization or any team. Agreed? So second point on my slide is the same. Number one was, we have to understand those organization and people are complex and that both can form a very complex situation. And manager must understand people and situation to manage it. Why they should understand these things? Because Again, I will go just to basic thing. What is the role of manager? Manager need to manage things. What things the resources of any organization can have? And human or people are one of the most important resources any organization can have. So they need to understand them. They need to manage them so that they should be able to achieve their goals in an efficient, in effective manner. Now let's talk a few other things. And, and remember, keep in your mind, today's lecture is focusing on people. We are focusing on people and trying to understand their importance. And once we are clear about this part, then it will be very easy for us to understand the team phenomena, the group mechanism, and the role of leadership, and how to make a team a delivering team or winning team. So number one, remember, it used to be for any organization, the bottom line was profit. Nowadays, in this era, it is not the profitability, the only mayor or performance of any organization. Short sighting organizations are the people they might have one time this objective that, okay, the profit is the only criteria of judging the performance, then they got the hope because that is, they are not going to go loss for the long. So remember, profitability is not the only measure of performance. Nowadays, good people, Either you have acquired their services, they are already working with you, or you have developed them. And what do you mean by good people? Good mean here, of course, they are part of your team. They know what they are supposed to do in the organization. They have this knowledge, abilities, and all those skills part KSA, we call it in the organization. They are efficient. They're effective, and the most important, they are good team members. So those good people, either you have acquired their services, or with the passage of your time and your investment, of the organization investment, or the leader's investment, you have developed them as good people of your organization. They can bring many strategic advantage for your organization. So, not only profit, is a good indicator of your performance or performance of your organization, but the good people too, which can bring fortune for your organization, which can create miracle for your organizations. And then you can find that a lot of research has been done. Tell us, and all those results of the research tell us that successes in organizations come from Putting leadership, people, values, the main objective goals, and proper relationship of leaders and the team members, and within the team, and the culture, these are the most important thing in today's organization. Because ultimately, you are going to get the profit, no doubt in it, but this is going to be sustainable long-lasting. Let me say it again. 
that you can find a lot of research. Go and search on the computer. Go and see in the, your books that people have figured out that what are those indicators which can take one organization ahead of other. It was the culture of that organization. It was the value system of that organization. It was the people of those organizations. They were the, having good leadership there, which was keeping those all team members intact and taking them to the success. So let's talk about ways a firm can use people to gain sustainable competitive advantages. And remember this thing, as I said earlier, you might be lucky that for one time you can have big profit in your organization. The important thing is the sustainable competitive advantage. Because now, due to this globalization thing, and everybody is having the equal opportunity of having access to resources, the money, the technology, and information is available to everybody. So it is not anymore the secret of business secret now. So the only way an organization can keep the competitive advantage, and that should be the sustainable, is through people. Cohesion and direction, which supported excellence, innovation, creativity, controlled risk-taking, and experimentation is the way forward. What does it mean? Let's discuss a little bit about these things. So any organization which can have these characteristics can be successful or leading organization. The cohesiveness within the team. The cohesiveness within, between team and the leader. The direction, clear direction with supported excellence. Remember last lecture, your last lecture? We said the first thing is the excellence. Whatever you do, no compromise on the quality and excellence. Unless you produce, you deliver excellence, you are not going to sell your idea, your product, or service in the market. So, excellence and a continued effort for innovation, creativity, doing it in a different way, looking at the processes, reinventing something, always striving hard for the improvement. They call it total quality management. Continue efforts. How can I improve this thing? How can I minimize the losses? How can I get these processes in an efficient manner? How can I bring my product in a different way? How can I create this product different so that my customers are more satisfied than my competitors providing them product or service? And then risk taking too. Of course, when you're doing experiments, you also take risk. And it should be a calculated risk. Risk doesn't, mind, doesn't mean that you just close your eyes and you say, I, I won't take the risk. No, it should be controlled risk taking. You have to do a lot of ex experimentations. That is why nowadays, all those dynamic organizations, they always have their R&D sections. Research and development, continue strive, continue efforts for improvement of their processes, their product, their services. So that is giving you an edge. And that is the only way of looking forward or moving forward. And that can give you a sustainable competitive advantage. You know that all those big organizations, they're investing huge amount of their resources on R&D. One can say, why? And if they can just get one thing out of that R&D, one product, one processes, which can have some positive effect on their procedure, or their processes, or their product, they can cover all the resources which they have invested on R&D. So that is a way forward. But all these processes, 
Who is doing those things? The people. Remember again, today's lecture is focusing on people. So, people implies worker, whatever you give, want to give them the name, are the organization most important assets. They are the assets. The task of a manager are essentially that he or she should be people oriented. Unless there is some understanding of people, management will be unsuccessful. Go back to your basic management course you have taken, might have taken. And they always teach you there that each level of management, they need different kind of skills. And mostly they talk about three types of skills. Technical, conceptual, and human skills. Remember that each level, the most important skill, which every at which at each level of management is required, the human skill. Doesn't matter if you are technically kind of wizard. Doesn't matter if you are conceptually a something big. But if you are lacking the human skills, you are not going to be successful in any organization. So this is very important that the, all those managers, the workers, middle manager, top manager especially, they need to be people oriented. Poor people management is an important contributor of failure of the project. That is why you remember last time I said that now when they're hiring, they're not only looking their knowledge, skills, and at the kind of abilities. Now they're also looking the behavior part because this is becoming a very important component or the skill or the criteria of a person to be successful. So people fact, the human aspect, very important, remember that. This is just showing you a cartoon of the old age, that how people used to get things done from people. This is a manager holding a flash in his hand. He put a hand on his hand. And he was able to deal with the animals. And people were getting job done from them. Can you imagine these type of thing, these type of thing nowadays? No way. So why, why it is not like that? It means they were wrong. This is not the way you can achieve something. And it is again been proven through different research that if you take your people and create a good environment in the organization, they deliver more than what even they should have been done in a regular routine way. And I, I have my personal experience with it, like this. We have done miracle in different organizations. Just taken a couple of people, young dynamic people, and taking them and owning them like a team member. And we were able to achieve so many good things which other way it was not possible to do in a routine manner. So, how do you take an organization? So, it is not anymore the machine based or economically driven paradigm. You need to take those things, shift those things from there to be more successful, community based, people based, value driven organization. And it all has to do with the people, especially the leader. Leader is very important, remember that thing. Because he or she is going to be the person who is going to excite people, who is going to excite the team. And then, then that team will deliver. And again, leader is also a human being. He is also one of those person which are part of the organization. So all those excitements in the team, all those motivation in the team, is being created by the leader. And leader need to understand those things. Technically, conceptually, yes, those skills are required there, but most important are the human skill. And leader, leader need to excite people. Once those few people, or maybe hundreds of people in any organization, and they are excited, Believe me, they can deliver more than whatever anybody is expecting from them. So, the final, the universal findings are 
what led to the outstanding success of any organizations are people, people, and again people. Why I'm doing all these things? Because I'm going to build a story on this. I'm going to set a stage for you to understand that these are the important thing. Once we are agreed, once we are clear that yes, people are important. And I'm not only telling you the story, this is the reality. That people are important, which can create the difference. So who, if, you, if you, someone asks you, give us the first three important sources any organization can have, which can really make the difference, I will always say people, people, and again people, which are going to create the difference. Importance of human resources and managers. Dying workplaces treat employees at cost. Now, this is the mindset. If you take your employee as expenses for you, what is going to happen? Whenever a business person, a businessman, and any organization leader, any owner of the organization, they take something as the cost. So what is going to happen? Logically, they will try to minimize the cost and try to get with minimum cost the maximum profit. This is the mindset. Again, it is proven that all those organizations where people are being treated as cost or burden, they are the dying organization. They are the going to be very soon finished organizations. High performing organizations treat people as valuable assets. They are not only valuable, but strategic assets. So manager must ensure that people are treated as strategic assets. What you do at your home? The most expensive thing which you think which is very important, you always take care of that thing extraordinary. You keep them in the safe places. You arrange extra things for that to safeguard that particular expensive thing the assets which you treat them. So that is how the organization can take advantage of those people if they treat them assets. This is the mindset, change in the mindset. Once this mindset is changed, then definitely it is going to have a positive effect. Let me share with you a very old quotation. As far as leadership is concerned, some of the most important attributes are inspiration and motivation and coaching that is 80 to 90 percent of my job a CEO has said this thing in 1977 in Canada so what a CEO is supposed to do the chief executive officer the leader is to inspire his team members is to keep them motivated and he she is not only just there to inspire or motivate them but to coach them, to act as a mentor. And if somebody is doing these things, his or her most of the time is spent on these activities, you can see their team is a delivering team, a winning team. And if he's just spending most of the time on nitty-gritty things, then I we got a hope. So I hope you agree with me that humans are assets, the people are assets. So why don't we give it a name of human? An organization can have the financial money, the capital, but they now have the human as capital. Organization trade in product, knowledge, services, innovation, whatever, all these things are carried out by this capital, the people. So they are the typical human capital organization. Any organization which is treating, which is dealing with their people, their human resource, after understanding that they are the people, they are the main instrument, they are the main input which create the difference, they are the human capital organizations. And they are the real successful organization. Once these things are clear, then it will be very easy for us to understand 
this subject of team management, the leadership things. Because then we will be very careful of dealing these things. Then we'll be very kind of excited to understand those dynamism, those mechanism through which a team can perform better. And we can understand the role of a leader and the process of this leadership in a better way. So that is the purpose of my today's lecture, to make sure that you understand the importance of this human resource, the resource which organization can have, which can create real difference in any organization. The human resource, the people are the human capital. Why a human capital environment is required in an organization? I'll go again and again, make sure that that thing is stuck in your mind, that these people are important. The difference comes from knowledge, creativity, and relationship. Things only people do. Machine can't do these things. How can an organization create difference? Through knowledge? Yes. Through creativity, through innovation, and who will do that? Machine. But who has made those machines to do those things for you? The people again. So bottom line is, what does it mean? People must be managed as assets. Invested and protected, very important. And this is the kind of asset which cannot stay there. It always improve. It always increase. The worth of this asset is always you can have. It's the only kind of investment where you have the better and better deal next time. The appreciation of this asset is in a big way. People buy land, right? In Pakistan, they think this is the only safest investment. And then appreciation is high there. Some people go and invest somewhere else. I always say in my classes and to my students and to my friends that please, if you want to invest, invest in people. Invest on your kids. Invest on your family. Invest on your students. Invest on your employees. That is the real asset. And that always appreciate and it multiplies geometrically. So, and when you are investing in any asset, you always also protect it. As I said, when you buy a land, you always try to protect it. Put some fence there. Put your name there so nobody should take it. So if you have the biggest asset with your organization, why don't you want to protect them? Protect them from where? Because you know that the one of the challenges in today's organization are facing to retain good people. And how can you retain them? Some say, increase their salary. How far you can go? So that is one aspect. But the most important is the culture, the ownership, the relationship between owner and employees. So if you have understood these things, then I believe you can protect your, these assets too. And these are not the costs. So human are a unique form of capital. So bottom line, we agreed on this thing. And what is important in that asset, which is human being, implies state of mind. The same asset can be devil for you. If the mindset is in a negative way. That is why a manager needs to be very smart, a leader needs to be very efficient to understand their employees. The mindset, the state of mind of the people working with you. If the same mind can go in a negative direction, that can create disaster for your organization. So it's a continued process. You keep on watching, appraising, motivating, training, observing, 
different behavior aspect, different activities of your employees. So that those state of mind should be in a positive direction. And that can make them asset for your organization. Otherwise, they can become big game. They can become your liabilities. Abilities to attend and focus, that is another thing which is very important for employees to understand. How focused they are with their work, their responsibilities, and how quick they can attend whatever in the team. When you can see the team playing, either cricket or hockey or whatever, they need to be well connected with each other. They need to understand even what other partner is thinking, what other move is going to be next, so that they should be a cohesive team and a winning team. They should be engaged always on the right work. Sense of connection to the organization's goal, that is very important. Those goals should become my goal if I'm working in an organization, the ownership part. And who is going to create all these things? Again, the leader, the mentor, the organization the culture of that organization that each employee should feel that this is my goal this is our goal and again by the way we need to get out of this i to we we this is a shift big shift we need to get out of this i concept and move toward we concept as a team i'll talk about these things later in some lectures and they should also be they should have the sense that their contribution matter. So organization and leaders, they need to create a culture in the organization that each member of the organization, each person working in the organization, they should feel confident that whatever they are doing, it has an effect on the overall delivery or output of the organizations. Their contribution are very important. And if each piece of the engine, this whole machine, is working efficiently, effectively, so naturally that machine will work. So this sense that the ownership sense, the sense that I am important, what I'm, whatever I am contributing, doesn't matter if it I'm on the uh, line, I'm working on the line, and I'm at a middle level management, or I'm at a top level management, if I'm directly in a technical part, or I'm just supporting some staff, each person matters. Each person is contributing something. And when somebody has, when your team member, they have this sense of a contribution, then definitely they will do extraordinary things. They will do all those things with full responsibility, with ownership. And that will create the difference. Another thing which is very important for employees is willingness to change. It is not always the status quo that, no, no, I just want to maintain that thing. We have to remember that things are changing. And we also need to change. I always say that if you will not change with the changing environment, you will become the history. You will be history, basically. And you also need to train your employees, your team member, that the change is always there. To create a change, there are different steps. Again, at later on somewhere, during some lecture, we'll discuss this change process. And we have, you might have already covered in different management courses the change process. So change is always easy when your people working within the organization, they are ready for the change. So how can you create this willingness? You have to communicate with them. You have to act as a mentor. You have to train them. It's seeing and believing basically. You have to show them that this change is going to be positive for them, for organization, and for everybody. So naturally the willingness will come. So any organization, they need that their employees should have proper state of mind, the positive state of mind. They should have the ability to attend and focus on whatever job or responsibility they are being, they have been assigned. 
They need proper engagement that keep themselves busy. They need a sense of connection to the organization goal, the ownership syndrome, the ownership mechanism. And they should have sensed that their contribution, their efforts are very important and that matter for organization, for leaders, and for their managers. Last but not the least, the sense of adoption of change. And once there is a change, maybe in technology, maybe in position, maybe in the processes, maybe this is a job rotation, they quickly need to adopt those things and go back again to that positive state of mind with the ability to focus, with engagement, with sense of connection with the organization goals, and again, sense of their contribution that matter, not for, only for him, but for organization and for their leaders too. So if this is there, then naturally this is going to be a winning team, a winning organization. And they're all, remember, the people, the human resource. Let me share it with you. This implies customer satisfaction connection mean that organization can have workplace support for their employees. They should have proper respect for them and fair advancement chances for employees and a meaningful job where people feel they, they enjoy doing their jobs. Flexible arrangement and control over their work. So what does it mean? It means that the employee will be satisfied there. Once employer is satisfied, so naturally the outcome will be the better performance. So a satisfied employee will give a better performance. And when the better performance is there, naturally your stakeholder, your customers are satisfied. And that is what people are expecting from employees or the people working in organization. Got my point? That when you have good environment, the workplace support is there, you are treating or you are dealing with your employee with the respect and your team cohesiveness there, so everybody will feel satisfaction. Employee will own it. They will not just count the hours to go home, rather they will stay there and work beyond their time limit. So that indicates that they are satisfied employee. Once they are satisfied, the logical outcome is their performance will be better. So if their performance is better, who is going to get the benefit? The customer. Let's see if your organization is producing some product. If the product is good in a good uh, proper shape and with the proper attributes, naturally your customer will be satisfied. If you are employee, if your organization is producing, some, giving some services, if your employees are satisfied and they provide the best services in the market, in the town, so customer will definitely will be satisfied and they will come to you again. So this is a natural, they call it employee customer satisfaction connection. So again, people are involved here the people who matter. So I believe now, you must agree with me that yes, this human capital is important. Because every action, every activity, this way or that way, ultimately will come to the people. And delivery again, the satisfaction again, the performance again depend on the people performance. So we need to understand these things and importance of these things to later on understand the role of leadership in team management. Clear? How can we develop a sustainable and world-class workforce? Number one, increasingly diverse workforce. You might have covered so many things in this diversity thing. Diversity will allow us to compete and win locally and globally. If you have a diverse workforce, the probability of going to be at world class level is more there. Because you have now people from different backgrounds, different cultures, different kind of learning skills, 
and different uh, cultures, definitely they are going to add the value. So number one is increasingly workforce is becoming diverse. That is a positive thing. The changing nature of work, it is more toward services now. Economy base has moved from manufacturing to services now. And now people are also think, should we build it? Should we buy it? Should we manufacturing ourselves? Should we outsource it? So these are another food for thought things. Job flexibility for employees, another thing. Now it is not only you just see the, your watch and see, okay, this time you, have, you are supposed to enter the organization and this time you are supposed to leave. No, it is not anymore the criteria. The bottom line is the job done. You are supposed, your employees are responsible to perform certain activities. And you have to give them the physical flexibility. The time is not important. The important thing is you have to deliver this thing. So this is a new trend. Growth of outsourcing is another, again, the way forward. As I said earlier, should you build it? Should you make yourself? Or should you outsource it? That might be more economical. That might be more efficient. Similarly, the new kind of relationship between employees and employer. It is not anymore the owner and the servant type of things. It is now different. Employees cannot expect long-term employment. You, can, you should not now expect that this is a lifetime commitment. You have to also understand that people will come and go. They will go for better opportunity. They will go for better choices. You will definitely make some contingent plan. So this is the reality again. And another thing is, employer thus cannot expect that it is a loyalty which matter for the long term. Similarly, employers trying to build a new kind of relationship now that an employer and employee partnership. It is a partnership now. It is not anymore the owner and the servant relationship. If you create that ownership thing, if you create that partnership type of environment in your organization, that has a positive impact. Then you can say that you are moving forward. Similarly, you have to understand that the labor pool is shrinking in the market. Of course, we can say in Pakistan we have 170, 160 million people. But the right type of people is important thing. We have limited supply of skilled employees looking for jobs. In different organizations, they always advertise, but it is very difficult to get the right type of person. This is also a ground reality. And then another aspect we discussed during the last lecture, that networking, the technology, the marketing, and these are the different things you need to do to have a world-class workforce in your organizations. So let's talk about in this last one or two minutes about this subject because I believe I've set the ground. Now you must be clear about the people and organization. So our subject is leadership and team management. And my role will be not the instructor. I will be the facilitator. And as I said earlier, there is no textbook recommended for this subject. I'll be taking help from different textbooks of different subjects, of course of management sciences, and I'll be bringing the things which are necessary, necessary to understand this concept. What I'll do basically initially, I'll separate this course into two parts, leadership and team management. From next lecture, I'll try to give you theoretical background of leadership concept. What is this leadership thing and what are the leaders? Then I'll shift to team aspect and team management thing. And at the last quarter of this subject, I'll merge these both things and try to bring real issues and situation thing so that we should understand this subject in a better way. What I'll be expecting from you, that you need to just go through basic management courses. Just read a few texts, basic management, HRM, organization behavior. And if you get some textbooks, any textbook about leadership, just go through, go through those things. And I'll be talking with you, I'll be discussing with you the theoretical aspect of the leadership with some small application in the real the reality things. And then we'll shift to team management. With this thing, I think we have to finish now today's lecture. 
I hope you understood the importance of people that matter at the end of day. Thank you very much. Take care. Hope to see you again. Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum.